Body odor is presented in almost any animal including humans. The intensity of the odor is different. In women, the sense of olfaction is strongest around the time of ovulation, it means body odor have important mating role. Humans can olfactorily detect blood-related kin. Mothers can identify by body odor their biological children, but not their stepchildren. Pre-adolescent children can olfactorily detect their full siblings. Babies can recognize their mothers by smell. These all examples highlight odor is evolutionary important player. But in many culture it considered unpleasant. Human body odor is defined by diet, sex health and medications, also sweat and bacteria which are reproduced in sweat. Human have three types of sweat glands but most odor produced by the glands which are represented in axillary, armpit, region and groin. Such sweat glands are called apocrine sweat glands and they are combination with sebaceous glands which produce oil. The main components of human axillary odor are unsaturate or hydroxylated branched fatty acids. Sulfonylalkanols, an odoriferous steroids androstenone and androstenol. Body odor is influenced by the actions of the skin flora, including members of Coronibacterium, which manufacture enzymes called lipases that break down the lipids in sweat to create smaller molecules like butyric acid. Men and women have different dominant bacteria population in the armpits. For man it is Coronibacterium gycium and for woman Staphylococcus hemolyticus. That's why when sweat odor is a rancid cheese-like smell, whereas female gives of more fruity onion-like smell. Sebaceous and apocrine glands become active at puberty. That's why human odor is not very prominent until puberty. Genetics also defines human odor. Several factors can increase body odor. Heavy exercise. Warm or hot weather. Being overweight. Changes in hormones. Diabetes, liver disease, or kidney disease. Diet, some fatty foods, oils, or strong-smelling foods such as garlic, curry, and onions can seep through your pores and cause body odor. Washing your skin with a wet washcloth and soap especially those areas prone to sweating can help prevent body odor. Generally, patients' complaints of unpleasant body smell or breath odor require ruling out life-threatening conditions like diabetes and liver problems, then less severe conditions, sinusitis, gastroesophageal disease, and tooth problems. In most cases, personal hygiene can improve unpleasant smell, though, frequent showers and teeth brushing may not solve the problem. Treatment Solution of hydrogen peroxide and water to fight body odor. Use 1 teaspoon of peroxide, 3%, to 1 cup, 8 ounces, of water. Wipe this on affected areas, underarms, feet, groin, with a washcloth. This may help destroy some of the bacteria that create odor. Wash your clothes often because clothes can be good area for bacterial growth. Bath or shower every day can partially prevent body odor. Try to avoid strong-smelling foods that may seep through your pores. Deodorants mask odor. They do not prevent sweating. Antiperspirants are chemical agents that reduce sweating. Many antiperspirant preparations also contain a deodorant, which helps to mask the smell. Check the product you use to make sure it contains an antiperspirant as well as a deodorant. Many deodorants are ethanol-based and likely more water-soluble and easier to wash away than antiperspirants, and antiperspirants contain aluminum-based salts that reduce sweat by forming precipitates that physically block sweat glands and thus may reduce resources necessary for the growth of microbial communities. The broader health consequences of antiperspirant and deodorant use are not well studied. Although it has been suggested that deodorant and or antiperspirant use is associated with incidence or age of breast cancer diagnosis. Antiperspirant use strikingly alters armpit bacterial communities, making them more species-rich. Because antiperspirants only came into use within the last century, we presume that the species of bacteria they favor are not those historically common in the human armpit. Whether these species may interfere with the function of beneficial skin symbionts, contribute antibiotic resistance genes, prove benign, or perhaps even confer beneficial effects to human health remains an intriguing avenue for further study.